So you'd think after three months of not uploading, I'd have some major updates. And you'd be wrong. I got a little busy and lazy. What did you just say? Instead of being productive, I made portals. Well, cause they're cool. When portals dropped in 2007, it blew everyone's mind. Seamless teleportation, recursive views, it was pure magic for its time. And even today, it's still one of the cleanest examples of mind-bending mechanics done right. So I thought, how hard could it actually be? I know it's been done a couple of times, okay, maybe a lot of times, but my version is special, cause I said so. And well, I wanted to do a few more things than just portals, like adding this bad boy, which I haven't actually seen anyone else do but I haven't looked that hard. These were some of the other things that I thought were cool that I'll show later in the video. Okay, okay. Imagine you don't know what a portal is for a second. <clears throat> a portal is a door that teleports you from one place to another. Your first thought might be, oh, like in Minecraft? No, those are boring portals. You have to go through a loading screen to enter those. These portals are seamless. You walk through one side and bam, you're somewhere else. None of this outdated loading, cuts, or screen fades. Just a simple step and you're seamlessly through to your destination. So how do we go about actually making this? Let's imagine a simplified top-down version. Currently, we know that we have to have the character, the first portal, and the second portal. Now, let's introduce a secondary camera. This camera is responsible for mimicking the character's view relative to the second portal. Whatever the camera sees is then sent back and mapped onto the first portal. If done correctly, the second portal's camera should now follow the exact movements of the character relative to the portal. This should now also work no matter the rotation of each portal. The code for this isn't actually as complex as it may seem. This is because I got very lucky, and Unity already has a built-in function for this. This function converts local space into world space relative to another object. And this function is the complete opposite, converting a world space position into a relative one. Now that we have an understanding of how to transform the portal's camera, let's go back into the third dimension. I made this simple scene with two portals and some obstacles, and a character with a simple movement script. When we apply the same concepts but to 3D, you can instantly see that this isn't the desired effect. This is because the portal's camera is returning its whole view, but we only want the section from the portal. Right now, the texture is using world coordinates to apply the texture but instead we actually want to make the texture use screen space positioning. Like when looking at the end portal from Minecraft. After applying those changes, the portal effect is not working. Now let's try to walk through them. All right, they don't work yet. Firstly, we need to understand when the character should teleport. Originally, I thought why not just test when the player overlaps with the collision of the portal, but this has a few of its own problems. Instead, the portal should only teleport when the character's camera has passed through it. This looks much better. Now that we know when to teleport the player, we still have to do it to the correct location and rotation. This step is actually very similar to how we calculate the position and rotation for the portal's camera. But there is one additional thing we need to add to this code. When putting the portals facing the same direction, this problem becomes way more obvious. We can see that it looks like the character hits a wall and then keeps walking. This is because the character's velocity is pushing back on the player. Luckily, this is a simple fix, as we just have to change the velocity relative to the second portal. If I jump through the portal now, it carries everything over correctly. Well, that's how I meant portals. Thanks for watching. No, there's still more. If we scope the portals a little bit, and send something that isn't the character through the portal, you might notice something wrong. And it's even more obvious with bigger objects. To fix this, we need to spawn a replica of the object when it first touches the portal's collision and make it perfectly track the main object relative to the other portal. Then, once the main object passes through the portal, we swap their positions. Then, once the replica is no longer touching the portal, we destroy it. This is what it looks like altogether. If we take a look at the other side of the portal, the main object is coming through. But, again, I'm lazy and the portal should only ever be up against a wall. Oh boy, it's all starting to come together. But there was one problem that I ran into that I wasn't able to figure out. This is a crazy analogy, so stick with me for a second. Imagine you're skiing down a hill, but the center of your body is directly through a portal. Let's say that a jump comes up only on the left side of you. When the ski hits it, you should go flying up off the jump. But if that's the side that your clone was on, it would be pretty much like if the jump never existed. This happens because the clone is striking to the main object that doesn't move. I had a few ideas, but I wasn't able to get them to reliably work. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Let me actually set up an accurate portal scene for this next step. Yeah, this should work. 
And let me just look for a portal gun. Perfect. This part is boring, so I'm not going to explain it. But now I can shoot portals to wherever I want. And I mean, wherever I want. I could do some checks to see if the shot is a valid space or realign the portals if it's not correct, but I don't got time for that. Shut up. Don't say anything. Now when placing the portals, there's a slight problem. It now kind of just looks like a fancy magnifying glass. If we place an object here in front of the portal's camera and behind the portal, it creates this weird effect. We could use a one-sided plane to fix this, but it doesn't work for every case. Another method is called oblique clipping. This is where we can essentially hide anything between the camera and the portal. Here's the code. I don't really care to explain it or really understand it, but you could probably figure it out yourself. This brings the portal's view from this to this. Much better. Now, if I place them both facing each other, there's a pretty obvious problem. And it isn't the fact that I didn't animate the character. It's that the portals aren't recursively rendering. When the portals look at each other, you should be able to see each reflection over and over again. Kind of like if you were to point two mirrors at each other. In real life, the photons bounce from each mirror going back and forth. But we aren't using ray tracing, so we have to do it slightly differently. Currently, it's rendering one portal, then the other, which only allows us to see through the first portal, but not anything past that. So what we need to do is use Unity's universal rendering pipeline to handle custom rendering. When putting the portals directly facing each other, we could see that a simple solution for this could be just to scale down the rendering and place it inside of the portal. But this doesn't work so well when each portal has a different rotation. The forward direction becomes further and further off the more iterations there are. To solve this, we have to do a very costly process where the portal is sent to the furthest position relative to its previous positions, then rendered and repeated, each time getting one step closer to the portal. This leaves us with a more realistic view, but it definitely lowers the frame rate. The default iteration for Portal 1 is only two iterations, but they also handle the unrendered portal instead of just leaving it looking like this. Now what I finally promised you all, the companion cube. To start, we need a way to pick it up. We do this by checking the player's input, and when they press E, we check if there's an object with a tag box in front of the character. If there is, then we set the box variable to the current game object, then we set its position every frame to 5 units in front of the player. Now I can pick up the cube, but what happens when it goes through a portal? It doesn't work. The position is updated every frame, while teleporting only happens once. To get this working, we need to do some more fun math. No, 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 wrong kind. With an A. Math with an A. In the update loop, we check to see if the player is holding a cube. If they are, then use a raycast to see what it hits. If it hits anything but a portal, then set its position to in front of the player by 5 units. But if it does hit a portal, set the end position relative to the other portal using the transform point function like before. Peekaboo. Okay, boy. Now, to pick up the cube through the portal, we have to do things a little different. We can use the same raycast as before to see if and where the portal is hit. The where is useful because we need to know how much distance the player has left the grab. If the character can grab the cube from 5 feet away, and is 3 feet away from the portal, they can only grab 2 feet from the other side. To accomplish this, we simply get the grab distance minus the distance from the start of the array to the hit point. Then do some more math and cast another ray from the other portal, starting at the portal surface, reaching out the remaining distance. Finally, if it hits the cube, then we pick it up and do everything I previously mentioned. Now that all the boring portal math is over, let me show you some of the cool illusions I made. The first one I've seen a couple of times, but I really like it. It's tunnels. Imagine having a tunnel that from the outside it stretches for miles, but inside it's only a few feet. This can actually be built pretty easily. All you have to do is place each portal at the entrance of the tunnel. The closer to the edge of the tunnel, the shorter the portal will become. We can also reverse the illusion to create a longer portal from inside and have a shorter outside. This can be done by having two tunnels. The first is a short tunnel where you place the first portal at the entrance and the second portal at the entrance of the long tunnel, and repeat this for the other side. And now you have this cool illusion. But there's still more you could do. Here's another illusion. It's a box with each face having different item and color in it. And here's another box with some more things. Each face is a portal that points to a hidden box somewhere else in the scene. And the eight-sided cube, well, that's a movie magic. Shh, but don't tell anyone. Here's a portal, and I added an effect when the player opens it up. I wanted to replicate the effect that portal has when you place down a portal. There's a small little distortion effect when the portal opens. This could be done with a simple shader and a few input parameters. Then, when I press the open portal button, these values are updated every frame until the portal is open, creating this cool distortion effect. And finally, my Minecraft world. 
I just started it out. It looks pretty scary being all the way up here. I hope I don't fall. Ah! Oh wait, I'm floating. What the? For this effect, I just surrounded myself inside of a box of portals and made another box somewhere else. Then around this box, I put the Minecraft background with a sun. Just like the portal animation, I added a keybind to start the portal fade effect. This is done with a frag shader with a simple noise function and another timer. When the timer goes up, it's used as a threshold to turn the color into transparent pixels. Well, that's all I got for portals and illusions for today. Maybe give it three more months and I might have some cool updates for Idlefisher. Bye! Hit it! Get it? Ooh!